Back at it, Chase, for a Friday, baby. My Friday show. Fun bag Friday, or whatever we're calling this thing. <laughs> yeah, I love it, yeah. man. I love it. Nice, man. Uh, what have you been doing, dude? I'm just, uh, been, I just I just got back from, you know, grinding through my, I got that, you know, my sling off last week. Oh, from the rehab. So wait, how yeah, many yes. When was the surgery? Let's go back there. When was so the my act? surgery was like January 18th, and I had to have six weeks in the sling. Wow. Been out of it for a week, but it's so funny. You, whenever you got a sling, you think, oh, everything's good. Like, I still can't, like, lift my arm. You uh, know what I mean? I'm like, you know, still, like, can't put my arm behind my back. So the biggest thing with, like, coming back is, yeah. like, just, you know, just getting that flexibility back. Right. And my my uh, my therapist, Ron, is just big dude, you know, former college wrestler at Kent <laughs> oh, State. Wow. Right? And he's just ripping my shoulder up. I'm like, uh, Ron, do you think this is safe? I'm like, <laughs> Gonna are you break sure? Off. <laughs> are you sure it's okay, Ron? Like, I feel like I'm in a freaking uh, a hit, Brett the Hitman heart move. Like, you know, I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I'm in the sharpshooter. You tap out. Yeah, you yeah. tap out yeah, every I'm, time he makes I'm you tapping out. Of, I'm tapping out of rehab. I'm like, ah! that's awesome. <laughs> hey, one other thing. I was getting ready for the show today. Uh, shout out Pittsburgh's. What is it? Pittsburgh Post Gazette. You guys have there. Yeah. Awesome yeah. article with you and uh, what's the guy's name? He's really great. Great yeah. article. J- Jason Mackey, man, really nice article. Really did a nice job. Really yeah. appreciate. It. Uh, you know, Max is a great dude, young writer for uh, um, the Pirates. You know, beat writer, um, and uh, I think he had nothing going on with baseball. Like, yeah, let's write an article <laughs> yeah, on Sean Casey. I, so, I saw, and then he so. did a little video thing where you guys were. Yeah. In, where is that area? You mentioned this on the show before, but I don't know if everybody's heard it. You have those uh, seats from a, a, a stadium, right? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. No, that was great. Right there, bro. Right there. Dude, there look at that. Tell that story. To Isn't people. that sweet? No, the those background. Are Forbes, Forbes, is... Those are Forbes Field seats. Wow. And that, uh, yeah, really cool, man. Really cool. Um, good buddy of mine, this guy Carmen Perrine, one of my best buddies. His dad, unfortunately, passed a, f- a few months ago. Mm. Off, awful story, dude. Like, uh, went to a, um, went to a restaurant. 79 healthy as can be you know obviously him and his wife go out all the time he he takes the first bite of lamb and chokes on the lamb and that's how yeah it's passed away an awful story oh. but what an unbelievable guy Jeez. dick Perrine, loved the pirates right loved the pirates and was a big collector too yeah and so before he had passed um there's an artist he, he owned his own he owned a hot dog shop he really owns a bunch of restaurants unbelievable yeah. entrepreneur yeah. owns pizza shops and stuff but he started this hot dog restaurant just to have fun because he loves baseball hmm. had this artist dino garino paint like it's like willie stargell clemente uh um Honus pan over Wagner, again pan over a little bit uh, ralph kiner show Steve it again Glass, mazaroski chuck tanner josh gibson like so Dick, wait show it one more time just passed, so everybody sees he, you want to see it? Yeah, yeah. Dick Show had, it one more time. It's, it's a great me. shot. I can't lose. Right there. He had given awesome. me. Um, that is so awesome. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the um, Dino Garino was the artist that did that, right? And he wow. had it all in this hot dog shop. And, oh. and when he, um, and when he passed, he, uh, he um, gave me, his son, Carmen, gave me those Forbes Field seats. He had those in the hot dog shop too. Crazy. And so really as a tribute to Dick uh nice. brain i i put the seats up in my house in the mayor's office and that wow. it's really cool and then and then i had you know obviously i had the first i had the first hit at pnc park and that wow. was kind of cool for me and you know it's just really really cool man wait so that did was, you uh, put that all up there or did sarah put that all up there uh, right. sarah put it up <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was why there were like three weeks when we were like practicing and talking and stuff and like sarah's in the back like hammering <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't take I was like, hey, I think you should put it right there. Move it over there. Put that picture there. Here you go. Oh, it looks great. Yeah, so funny. <laughs> um all right, so I, I gotta tell you what's going on here over in the uh the the sweet town of Long Island I'm in in New York. I get this alert right before like I'm telling you, this was like fifteen minutes. We didn't talk about this. This fifteen minutes before we came on, so I'm bringing it to you right now. Ready? Rare coyote, coyote warning issued in Nassau County. That's my county, okay? <laughs> there are reports of coyotes all over here. And of course, they say it won't be that big of a deal for you if you don't have pets. Of course, I have two have dogs <clears throat> and a cat, right? And this is the warning applies to all Long Islanders, officials noted, but specifically to pet owners whose animals could be in potential potential danger if they encounter a coyote on a loose. <laughs> First of all, no shit, but I mean <laughs> This is this is funny. This is the part that got me. It says, uh, according to the SPCA, 
Pets should not be fed outside. Garbage should be covered and kept out of sight. It's like being in a woods, like, like an, ugh, unbelievable. And compacts should be made inaccessible. Fine. Then it says this, which I had never known, and this is good for everybody to know now. That said, if you see a coyote, do not run. Right. Oh, make you, yourself big, right? Or you run, at it, run at it. <laughs> no, make yourself big. I think that's a bear thing. Do, no, but, do you run at it? You no, run no. at it. It says it also recommends that you make loud noises and wave your arms aggressively. I guess that's making yourself big. I guess that's, that's why he would eat me because my shoulder can't get up. <laughs> oh, He'd be yeah, like, I'm going to one arm. He's got one arm. I'd be like, coyote, <laughs> coyote. <laughs> it says, do not feed them. No, no crap. Um, what else? Uninten unintentional food sources attract coyotes. Don't feed your pets outside, of course. Make any garbage inaccessible. Fence or enclose compost piles. There's not any of that around here. Eliminate the availability of bird seed. Concentrations of birds and rodents that come to feeders can attract coyotes. Who knew? Dead. What else? Don't let them approach you. No shit. But how they? How, you can't. It says don't let them approach people or pets, but it also well, says scream and do this. Dude. <laughs> oh, what is that well, I think it says scream if you're cornered. Like you're outside gardening. You're like, oh, God, there's a coyote right next to me. Then you just, <laughs> that's when you start going berserk and waving your arms. You know what I mean? Yeah. Dude, it's so funny you said this. I swear to God, a few years ago, I live here in Pittsburgh. You know, we're up in the mountains yeah. or whatever. Oh, yeah, that's true. And I got woods all behind me. And one oh, night right. I'm outside. I swear, and I look, and I was like, oh, there's a dog in my yard. Like, <laughs> like, why is, why is there a dog in my yard at 11 p.m.? Thing walks yeah. by, I'm like, no, that's a big German Shepherd. I look a little closer, like, holy God, that's a wolf. Or a <laughs> what? <laughs> so what did you do? So I did the same thing. With, like, you, you got that warning? <laughs> Obviously, I was, it wasn't near me. I was like, I was in my house, but I was on the balcony. I was looking at it like oh, I was okay. outside. He just kept walking by, but I was like, but I literally was like, okay, now we got problems. We got wolves in the area, <laughs> oh right? God. And so so I did the same thing you did, Chich. Well, what I did there, I looked it up. I was like, what do I do yeah. if my kids play outside? Exactly. And uh, the yeah. kids were little at the time. So they're like, listen, a wolf will attack a child. <laughs> oh, my and God. A, and, a, and an animal. We had a couple cats. They don't, they're inside cats. They don't go outside. Right. But, dude, I, that's the one thing I was like, what do I do? Do I act like it's a, you know, I, and I remember it said, like, act like you're a maniac and start just going berserk on this thing and it'll freaking take off. Well, that's easy for us. We're both kind of maniacs. That's the one thing from that article I read. It's um, Sean Casey's energy in, in, in Pittsburgh. Post that that's a great line. Sean Casey's energy feels like if you had just chugged an energy drink. <laughs> so I think you'd be well, all right with the guy. Remember, when, remember when one of the first podcasts we had, Johnny Bench said, I make coffee, coffee nervous. <laughs> Yes, a great line. Makes sense. Oh, nice. So that's what oh I got. Oh my god, that's what I got so going good. on over here. Oh, uh, bro. Well, what about, dude? What about? Have you been watching any shows? Millions. Uh, that's all we do, dude. Dude, dude, dude I, I, what, what, what have you been watching? Because uh, I, I got, um, I, I just, dude, I got a little, I got a little, uh, a buddy of mine was like, hey, uh, Peaky, Bl do you watch Peaky Blinders? No, and you keep telling me to, and I have to, dude. Have to. Punch yourself right in the face right now. <laughs> I love when you say that. That's my favorite. Thing. <laughs> the fact that you don't watch Peaky Blinders because it's awesome. You got to watch it with the caption, closed caption on it, English. Oh, because they subtitles. Like, yeah, like you got to watch. But, but, what is that called? Like Cockney English or like a? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But I, I don't know. It's so old school English or whatever. But I, I watch the first three episodes. I'm like, I have no idea what the, are these guys talking Chinese. Uh, then when I put the when I put the subtitles on, I was like, okay, now I can hear what they're saying. Uh -huh. It's the best show ever. But but season six isn't out yet, right? So my buddy the other day is like, hey man, did you see the new Peaky Blinders? Like, dude, no, I didn't see it. What? He's like, he, he's like, what are you talking about? It's not out yet. And he's like, yeah, it is. It, it's out. And then so no, then I came home, put on Netflix. And I'm like, oh, it's not there. So Sarah and I are sitting down to watch. It's not there. I'm like, what the heck? And next thing you know. I call him up I'm like, bro, Peaky Blinders, I can't find it. Like, you just you just teased me so bad. I'm right. dying to go watch it. He's like, oh, it's on in the UK. And I was like, well, how are you getting it? He's like, oh, I have this special device. Oh, give like, me a break. Like, remember back in the day yeah, when you used to steal pay-per-view? Like, yes, you used absolutely. to steal WrestleMania? Like, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> well, dude, so I called him. I'm like, bro, how do you have that device? So I'm, I'm looking into that, trying to find out what That's, that's a great I get device. Blinders. Oh, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. All right, I got one for you right now. This yeah. this one is tripping me and Jess out big time. It's oh. called Severance. Okay. Really? Good. All right. I'm going to write that down because I yeah. need a new show. No. Oh, dude. 
this will this just I, is it not like it's not vampires and zombies no, and stuff no, like that because so, it is i am not watching it i'm not you know, I don't, i'm not i'm not falling for that again i <laughs> I, I know exactly what you're talking about because we watched a show a, a, a few weeks ago i'm forgetting the name but it was like we, you we got like six episodes in and we're like wow what's going on here this is so yeah, great yeah. and then you find out it's vampires like ah, or, or, like uh, come it's on it's the worst it's, it's the worst bro. Doing. like find something, something new realistic. Yes. yeah i don't give me, there's no zombies coming down the yes. road and eating my head off <laughs> exactly not not at least right now maybe in like five yeah. years but this show severance <laughs> listen i'm just gonna give you the premise okay this is guy. Think about like people, most people, most people listen to this, like you don't love going to work every day and it's a grind and whatever. And Severance is based on this company where you get the option and you sign up for it, where they put this like chip in you, in like your brain. Right, right. Where you don't you <laughs> separate yourself from your work you. Okay, right. this is deep. You got to you got to watch this, this your might happen too. This might happen too. <laughs> know, this like, in 10 years right. severance is going to be real. So it's it's basically like, all right, you're going to go work an 8-hour day every day and you hate going to work. You don't right. even have to know. You won't even know what happens there and you'll just go there and then when you're home, you're you again. But clearly like there's so much that goes into that and this this show is so messed up because it's kind of real like you said like i feel like it could happen in two years like our iphones right. they want to put chips in our heads Dude, the, the, the elon musk already has a chip that goes in your head <laughs> yeah, next exactly. you know you're freaking a garbage man yeah. you come back you're like hey i'm back to my real life <laughs> that's what i'm talking about but like the twists and turns oh my god I'm, I'm tripping over it and there's there's one other one that that we're losing our minds on right now it's called the servant i think it's a netflix one really okay okay the servant it's Oh my god, this is deep. This is crazy. But it starts off like there's this guy who's like a chef, like a semi-famous chef. He's starting to go on all like the Food Network type shows. Right, right. right. Like basically, like he's like he's not taking on Bobby Flay. <laughs> no, no, he's like a judge. No, he's like a judge on some of those shows. He, he's like a right. Jeffrey Zakarian for all you Food Network fans, like a fancy chef guy. And they have a little kid. They have a baby, and something tragic happens. And Baby's gone, but then all of a sudden the baby's back. I'm trying not to give anything away. The baby's just back a couple of months later, and they have a nanny. And it's just, right. uh, she's I can't, evil. I can't she's get evil. This. She's evil. I don't know. No, you don't know. All you right. don't know. Right. She could be, you don't know who the good guy is in this show, and we're two seasons in, and you don't know <laughs> who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. I love stuff like that. It's like, like Stone that. Cold Steve Austin wrestling. <laughs> yeah, you didn't yeah. know if he was good or bad. Yeah, He's yeah, just exactly. legit. <laughs> it's just like that. What else you got? What else you watch? Dude, dude, have you ever seen the show Lillehammer? No. Bro, I'm telling you, it's a sleeper show. Is it? It's a, for all the people out there, check it out. I'm Lillehammer. It's down. on Netflix now. It's Steven Van Zant, bro, from Sopranos, but oh, also Bruce yeah, Springsteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love him. He, love he, him. Gets, he gets like... You know, deported to Norway on on like uh, you know like the FBI, you know you whatever that when they hide you from the people or whatever. Yeah. He ratted a couple guys out, and he like starts like the Sopranos in Norway. Oh, and he's, he's in Lillehammer, Norway, bro. It's a great show. Bro. You gotta that. watch. It. Wait, I have a Stephen Van Zandt story. That's awesome. Okay, Do so you? yes, right, go ahead. Sopranos season was coming out. This back again. Everything really fun that happened in my career happened in these like two years. I was at Cold Pizza because all the celebrities would go through there. And Steven Van Zandt comes in. They were promoting the next, I think it was the final season of Sopranos. And he, dude, he had the do-rag. He, yeah. he was Steven Van Zandt. <laughs> and love everything it. you love about him on the screen, he is the exact same guy. He was so cool. And then so we do these segments with him where we try to kind of bring sports into whatever the actors are doing, like uh, in some way, shape, or form to make the segment make sense that these guys are on our air. Right. So... He's from New York, New York, New Jersey, uh, Yankees. So we start talking about the Yankees. And I'm like, why don't we do Yankee stuff? And he goes, I, I'm outing him right now. But he's like, I don't really know shit about sports, man. I don't really pay attention to the Yankees. I don't pay attention to sports that much. I don't know anything. And I'm like, okay. And then he starts talking. He goes, I got an idea. He goes, you got a prompter? And I was like, yeah, we, we have a prompter. And so he's like, all right. You, it was Jay Crawford was involved in this. The guy we talked about, his buddies with your buddy and Cincy. Yeah, with and we Jim sit Day. down and we start formulating questions, and we put his answers of like who his favorite Yankee is and why, and we put everything in the teleprompter. And dude, <laughs> he acted it out like he was the biggest Yankee fan 
you have so great, ever met. Dude. It just proved how great of an underrated actor he is. That like he basically just nailed the scene of being a baseball fan when I don't think he's ever watched a baseball game in his life. Pretty cool. That's so great, dude. Yeah, I love cool. I, dude, he's a great actor. I love him. Well, he was actor. obviously great in The Sopranos. Yeah. But in this Lillehammer, he's the main character. I'm telling you, there's only three seasons. There should be more, yeah. but it's so good. But I got a couple more for you, bro. 1883. Oh, are, you, are you watching Yellowstone? I haven't watched it yet. You tell me Dude, that every I, week. Listen, you can't drop Severance in the server on me, and then I drop A. You watch Peaky Blinders and Yellowstone, you're like, hey, bro, I've never, heard, never uh, heard of those shows. <laughs> it's not that, like I never Gotta heard be. of them. You know what? I have trouble with hype. Like, when I was in college, the big thing was on whatever night it was on, Thursday nights, everybody would watch Seinfeld, Seinfeld, itself, and I'm like, this show can't be that good. F forget it. And I didn't watch it until like five years later. It did the same thing. I, I have trouble with It turns out it's one of the best shows ever. I know. It turns out it's one of the best shows I know. ever. Wait, there's a... <laughs> Wait, so tell, tell us a little bit about that show. Yellow, Yellowstone. About Yellowstone. Oh, everybody well, yeah, for, okay, except for me, no, no, I guess, Yellowstone's right? a, No, but 1883 <laughs> okay. is, is John, the Dutton family... Coming to Montana to, to own the land, and it's unbelievable, dude. Eighteen eighty three is not that long ago. What is it? One hundred four years ago. Back in the, back, is that right? Is that yeah, good well, yeah. Re relatively ba speaking, dude. Funny. Back in that day, they're like, "Hey, uh, I don't really like you." Bam, we shoot you. Like it's like you're gonna. It's unbelievable. That's awesome. I see. Like, I'm that's into not that, that, that stuff. long ago. It's, it's crazy. We haven't, we haven't evolved that much, bro. We're talking about putting <laughs> chips. We're talking about putting chips in our head. One hundred forty years ago, they're like, "Hey, they let's, shoot she's him. got sepsis. She's gonna die. Just shoot the guy." <laughs> Like, you know, worst out. I got one. I got one that's great. Uh, again, it's not as popular. It's called, where is it? Our flag means death. Okay. Tr trust me on this. We started this last night. Is it only three episodes in? Why are I gotta you laugh, laugh, dude. I gotta laugh. I've never heard of any of these shows. Well, guess what? I'm, drop, I'm dropping some of the best yeah. shows out there right no. now. You're dropping no, our flag you're just, means you're business. You're just dropping like, you know, you get stuck in the social commentary and you're like, oh, I guess I gotta watch this to be cool. I try to go dive deep into things that are really good and entertain me. Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> okay, listen to this. No, this is <laughs> What's it called again? Our flag means our business? Flag, <laughs> our flag means death. Oh, okay. geez, death. No, listen. Okay, here is it. Th this is, do you ever see Robin Hood Men in Tights? The, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Hysterical, right? Right. Okay. It is a cross between that, The Office. Oh, my God. Are you and serious? I'll go there. Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> it's that good. Wow. Yes. Wow. I mean, it's I not, gotta, I'll have to check that one out. Okay. It's basically like, so listen, I'll give the premise to this one quick. And you tell me if you agree. I, you, I'm already, I'm shook because you're right. I, I like weird shows. <laughs> so I'm trying to. to, to you're sorry. weirder. Than, you're weirder. I knew you were weird, Chinch. You're weirder. Now you're weirder. <laughs> Wait. But so this guy, he's like a rich kid from like Britain, like a rich kid. And so he leaves everything with all his money and he becomes a pirate and he hires like real pirates, but right. like they're getting paid and whatever. And he's got all this money. So they don't have to really be pirates that much. They don't have to steal much because he's paying them like a salary. <laughs> See, that's funny to begin with, but then it gets like hardcore and like Blackbeard, the, you know, Blackbeard, the pirate big time. Like that's what yeah, he comes back. <laughs> he's comes back. This is, we should just do movie reviews and forget. Sounds this. like a great. We should, sounds like a great show. Bro. <laughs> like I, great. I guarantee it's one. Of, it's going to be one of the funniest shows out there. How about Ted Lasso? Have you watched Ted Lasso yet? I love Ted Lasso. Okay. I love Ted Lasso. Good. I just love the positivity of Ted. Oh Lasso. my god! You know I mean, like it's it feels great. so good. I think all the shows are like our flag means death, <laughs> servants, severance. You know, eighteen eighty three. We're just blowing people's at Yellowstone. Frick, we're just killing people. Yeah. You got Ted Lasso finally Ted saying, Lasso "Hey, great. let's just have a good time, guys. Let's be positive. <laughs> oh, let's win ball games. It's so you know? good." Be positive. I love you. Power of positivity. It's really... That's another one I didn't watch, and they won two Emmys in a row, back-to-back, -back, best show, and I'm like, screw this. I'm going to watch. It can't be that good. But it's good. It, it's... Oh, my God. It's, like, emotional. Like, I root yeah. for every single character in that show. Every time I see Sudeikis, though, I think of uh, Eastbound and Down when he was uh, Kenny Powers' oh. buddy on there. <laughs> Oh, good in that. And then, he, oh, and then he, die, he dies, and they were trying to figure out who Maverick or Goose was. He's like, yeah. dude, I'm Maverick. No, I'm Maverick. I'm Maverick. Yeah, so and then, then Sudeikis dies, and, and, 
and freaking uh, Kenny Powers shows up with the, the boom box at his funeral <laughs> yeah. and he's playing I'm Still Alive. <laughs> so good. Pearl Jam's you know I'm else, Still Alive. You know what else he's great in? You, you've seen the horrible bosses movies, right? Oh, yeah. I love oh, those dude, Part two, when, when they're trying to do an, a, a te, like a, a hillbilly accent when, they, when they're pretending to kidnap the son and he gets on, he's like, well, Mr. Sir, I tell you, sir. Like, He's one of the funniest dudes he's around, so man. From he's Can- so good, dude. Kansas or Kentucky he's from, which you uh, can tell. He's, got, he's awesome. Uh, all right, that's that was a lot. I, I feel <laughs> violated. I feel so... I got, Guess what, though? I like I like some indie kind of TV shows. Oh, I'm going to watch... I think I'm going to watch Severance tonight. Check it out. Watch Severance. It'll trip you out. That's a good one. All right. So what do you got? What else you got, bro? You got... Are we doing a little quiz today, or...? I have a quiz. This yes! Is a t- <laughs> Our friends... Our friends at, uh, what is it, BuzzFeed, which yeah. don't, don't pay us and have no idea who we are or why we do. We do every week we promote the BuzzFeed. <laughs> I okay. know. We don't, they don't know us. We don't know them. But we're like, hey, go get BuzzFeed <laughs> app. Yeah. All right. This is a tough one. Okay. Uh, tell us how you'll handle these minor emergencies. All right. And, we'll and then what are you going to We're yeah. going to explain what kind of parent you are. Oh, God. Are you serious? All right, here we go. Yeah, but it's not bad. I I usually test it out first in case. I'm a great parent. If it comes out and I'm a bad parent, I'm a great parent, BuzzFeed. (laughs) I want to hear it. All right. First one. A cockroach visited you while taking a shower. How do you deal with it? Do you burn your bathroom to the ground? You do nothing. They can hang. Capture it and bring it outside. Or hide in a bedroom and text your friend about it. <laughs> tough. I'm telling you, oh this is tough. This Hide is... in a bad texture on uh, nothing. You know what? I probably capture and put it outside, but then I gotta call somebody because yeah, if you yeah, know yeah, where yeah. there's one of them, there's a million uh, of them, and uh, I gotta freaking bizarre. I gotta do something about it. So I, agree. I put that one outside, and then maybe I come I mean, in with the Calvary later and nuke the <laughs> freaking bathroom. <laughs> okay, another good one. Your Wi-Fi just went out during an important meeting with your boss. You don't really have a <clears> boss, but yeah. your business yeah. meeting. What do you do? Cry into your coffee cup, run to the nearest coffee shop, sit back and wait for the Wi-Fi to come back on, or text your coworker and tell your to tell your boss what happened. Yeah, I probably text. I yeah. text the coworker and I'm like, "Hey, yeah. my Wi-Fi is down, bro. I I can't believe I don't have the boss's number. I'm, why am I texting you?" Yeah. I guess I'm not that cool. I agree with that. And I'll also tell you this little trick, by the way, especially in this day and age where you have a lot of Zoom meetings that you don't really want to be on. Yeah. I've hit end and then texted somebody like, hey, tell them my wife. I went out. Like, I mean, that's a good, that's, hey, tell, tell or, or I'll just hang off and text the boss like, hey, man, listen, uh, my Wi-Fi just went down. I can't be down. All right, you ready? I'm this golfing. Deep. Yeah. <laughs> you accidentally burned your friend's favorite cookware, cookware, while you were house sitting, what do you do? Buy them a new one, take it home with you, and hope they forget. Try to fix it and text them what happened, or leave them money with a note. <laughs> you can go two ways. I think you have two different. I'd ways. probably buy them a new one. <laughs> yeah, I think that too. Yeah. You're not just gonna leave them money. Like, what if you? No, I'm not doing. It. I'm gonna go. I gotta get. Then, then they have to go buy it. <laughs> I, I just inconvenienced them. I gotta go freaking make it right. <laughs> okay, you ready? You accidentally sent your crush a DM. Let's just say you're single, admitting that you like them. Wait, wait, who? Are the, my crush? Yeah, a DM. If okay, you're yeah, a single yeah. person, you sent. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. You actually sent your crush a DM, admitting you like them. What do you say? I can explain. Delete the app. Send a vague emoji, or just write again. Yeah, I like you. So what? But you accidentally sent your crush a DM. I can explain. Delete app. I just send a vague emoji like. I like kidding. the vague like, emoji. I, yeah, yeah. I, just, I, I send like I send like the panda bear emoji. Like, okay, this is getting weird. This is getting weird. This is getting weird here. And I said the turd emoji, and then it's like, okay, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. And they're like, oh my bad. I was just, I just hit the wrong button. I started sending these emojis, and and, I and then. Telling you I like you. I know. And at our age now, we don't even know remotely what emojis mean, right? Like, I don't. Yeah. Your kids know no a idea. lot more. There's, that's a whole uh, language we don't know. My that's, daughter, Jillian, is in sixth grade. Just, you know, I was doing her homework. It's just emojis. She's, she, but she's working on her computer like I've never seen before, you know? 
<laughs> there's, there's a great one out there if you ever see like texts from old people to young people and <laughs> this is the best one i've ever seen i don't know if it's real or not but this woman this grandma was texting people about a family member who died and she kept saying grandma jenny died lol grandma jenny died lol and kept writing that to the whole family. And the daughter wrote back, Mom, why are you laughing at this? And she's like, what are you talking about? I thought that meant lots of love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my All God. right, we're still going here. All right, your nephew or niece, <clears throat> oh, this is a good one, asks you about the birds and the bees. And your family is nowhere to be found. What do you say? Do you panic call family until someone picks up? Do you explain what it means? Do you show them a YouTube video about it, which I can't imagine. That's a good idea. Or do you open a wine bottle and say nothing? <laughs> you know, I'd probably explain what it means, but in very vague terms. <laughs> yeah. And then I say, listen, if you want to get in depth, ask your parents when they get home. <laughs> That's a good answer, I think. All right. Okay. One or two more. This is a good one. Oh, I, I think I, I, this is why I picked this, because I just think pictured you doing this, because I'm sure you've done it before. A drink spilled inside your bag and you have to leave the house in five minutes. <laughs> what do you do? Do you cancel the appointment and stay home? Do you bring the essentials and just leave? Do you clean it up in a hurry? Or do you have a mini meltdown? So a drink spills inside my a drink spills inside your bag and you have to leave the house in five minutes. Uh let me see. These things are so good. I just grind through it, bro. I clean it up in a hurry. If it's wet, it's wet. I just do whatever. Yeah. It, do, you know, it doesn't stop me from dominating. Yeah. I've I have i have like just left it in my bag and brought my whole bag before with things like yeah. that before. Yeah. All right. All right, here we go. You're in an acquaintance's party. Oh no, I thought about you this too. You're in an acquaintance's acquaintance's party and their toilet floods after you blew it up. What do you do? Do you make a joke about what happened to them? Do you plunge it until it stops? Do you ask someone at the party to help uh, for help, or do you offer to play a play a plumber to fix it? I feel like I would do all four. But <laughs> Dude, I've actually had this happen oh, before. What am I gonna that's not a so good this is when you drop a bomb at the acquaintance's house, you clog the toilet? <laughs> yeah, you clog the dude, toilet. Dude, I, I, go, I just go for the plunger and start ripping away. Yeah, but one, well, dude, dude, one time I'm in the, I was in the Cape Cod League and when I was 19, <laughs> and like yeah. I clogged the toilet, and I looked down, I'm like, <laughs> there's no toilet paper. First off, there's no toilet paper. The toilet's clogged. I'm like, what do I do? And next thing you know, I call my mom, Joe Casey. I'm like, mom. <laughs> Bop, 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 the toilet. Wait, what what, you where do? is this? Where are you? I'm in the Cape Cod Lake. <laughs> I'm, at, I'm at my host family's house. Uh, uh, oh, no. <laughs> host family's house. And I'm like, Mom, what I do? Everyone's <laughs> in the other room. You know, and she's like, you got to cut it up. <laughs> <laughs> no. She's like, she she's, like, she's like, you serious? I'm like, yeah. She's like, find something. And so I'm in the bathroom chase. I'm, like, I'm in the bathroom. I finally found like a what? nail file. There's the only thing I can find. And I'm like, a nail file? I'm, I'm stabbing. No. Yeah, I finally. No. Dude, I, I, chopped, I chopped it up like I was at a hibachi steakhouse. <laughs> that might be the best story you've ever told. Wait, you called her? You were on your cell phone? No, no, I was. It was a phone. I, for some reason, I had a cordless phone in the. In the thing. I was talking. I think I was talking to her, talking to her at the time, and I'm like, "Hey, I got a problem. I got a situation right here. I think I clogged the toilet. No toilet paper." That is an amazing. Oh, that might. You've told a lot of stories. That might be the best. <laughs> I can't. I could just picture sweet Joan Case picking she's up like, the phone. She's like, like, "What'd you do now, Shawnee?" Yeah, oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, she's like, shit yeah, down the toilet. She's like, first thing she says is, is there a hanger? I'm like, hanger? I'm in the bathroom. Why would there be a hanger? <laughs> that just shows you moms know how to answer every question. <laughs> oh, my God. Holy shit. Okay, so plunge it until it stops is going to be the, the go-to answer for this particular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plunge it. <sighs> if, you can't slice, if you can't slice it. <laughs> God, oh my god i don't think you've ever made me laugh that hard. All right. your domestic flight just got canceled last minute pick your next move call customer service asap go to the bar drive instead or book a flight with another airline this is a good one because i feel like you're kind of good at this stuff i think you're well you know i've done this before this. my domestic flight's been canceled when i was at work and i and i had to get home for the kids for something a game or something right. so I, I rented a car and drove I figured you would do that. That's what I would do. I rent a car and drive. Because then I guarantee I'm going to get home. It doesn't matter. Like, next flight could be canceled. I can't risk it now. I got to drive. 
I like that. And you're good at driving. You can drive distance. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a, great a good driver. distance. I'm driver. a great driver. <laughs> All right, I got your results. Are you ready? What What is it? Your parenting style is you're the rule breaker parent. Ooh. Okay, <laughs> but I don't think this is bad. Rules? Question mark. Not in your household. You'll prefer to follow the beat of your own drum whenever you become a parent, which you already are. Others may view, view your parental style as avant-garde, but you'll have a method to your madness. What's that mean? What's avant-garde mean? <laughs> I think it's like, kind of like artsy or a little outside <laughs> okay, of the box. Okay, okay. <laughs> but you'll have a method to your madness, and it will work. So we got a positive. Yes, you'll still believe in discipline. True. Yes. But not in a traditional sense, which I also think is true of you. Yes. I think this kind of, this is yeah. giving me a little. And education will still be important, but yes. you'll also value and find other ways to teach your kids the way of the world, which is Sean Casey does that daily. I know it. Boom. Not BS, and that's a good one. Heck, you might even discover better ways of bringing up little ones than what's been traditionally taught. You do you, Sean. That's what it says. Let's go, baby. Let's go. That nailed me. Thank I, you, BuzzFeed. I, I guess what? Me. They nailed it. I don't know if the rule breaker parents are right. Yeah, I don't think that's, there, but. that's kind of like a, a derogatory term, but they yeah, gave you a yeah. positive spin I think spin they could have come up with something better. To that, <laughs> they should have been like, you know, you're uh, eccentric. Nah, eccentric's not even more. Or just yeah. Austin, the Austin. And guy. leave the avant-garde at home. Let's just put <laughs> layman's how terms about, in there. How about, the gray, how about the gray area parent? The things aren't black and white. Just they're gray oh, no. sometimes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's, no, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. They're, they're, just they're, not always, they're not always black and white. Sometimes <laughs> you got to like, ah, I'm not going to do that this time. Yeah. I'm going to do this. Oh, boy. Huh. Yeah. Wow, that was productive, man. We got a lot out of that one. <laughs> so, again, I go back to the, your, your interview with that guy, and you're like, and he's talking about the podcast. And you go, yeah, also, by the way, we also do this other thing on Fridays. It's a, it's a, We just call it, like, Fun Bag Friday. I don't know. It's pretty fun. <laughs> it's it best, is fun. Dude. That's it the best fun. way to explain it. I hope you people are liking it as yeah. much as we are. Because we, we, yeah, we basically are winging this thing and just having fun. Chinch and I talk a lot on the phone. I was like, why don't we bring one of these conversations to the air? Yeah. So we do it. Yeah, so there it is. But if you haven't seen yet, right, so l let me give you a little, uh, little housekeeping here. Before yes. we go, if you not have you not seen or listened to the John Hirschback interview that we did this past week, please so do. He is so cool, and I'm telling you, he, the inspiration in this man's life and how yeah. much he's overcome. What a brilliant, it's, great it's man. It's unbelievable. One of the best umpires ever, one of the greatest guys. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you know, has, has dealt with a lot in his life and overcome it, and just wonderful people, wonderful family. And just wonderful stories, too. Because you get it from an umpire's point of view, you're like, wow, this is awesome. This is different. Yeah. So, yeah, check it out this week. And yeah. go back in our archives, too, and check out. You know, we just brought up the Johnny Bench one this episode. Mm -hmm. There's so many good episodes going all the way back. So, yeah, totally. Pretty awesome. And then yeah, next so. week, we got our boy Bill Ripken. Billy Ripken coming on next week. Diving into a lot of things. Yeah. Roommates yeah. at the network and, you know, the pet peeves of being roommates together is one great thing. Yes. I have yeah, something. A lot of I have something the fans stuff. I'd like to have chime in on the fact it had to do with me going to an Elton John concert and the fan behind me kind of being us being at odds <laughs> with Sean and Bill helped clear up clear that up for me. Yeah. Tons of stuff, but also he's gonna be good. Bill's one of the best it, ever, so it, that's it's Bill thing. Ripken, dude. It's you, yeah. you're guaranteed for he's a yeah. you know one of the best families ever in the game. So mm -hmm. Ripken family. Yeah. All right, Chinch. All right, bro. Love you, buddy. Love you too, uh, man. And everybody out there. Please, you're, you're, you're helping us out. We see what you're doing. Yeah. You're hitting download. You're hitting subscribe. You're helping to move the needle. Keep helping us move it. Tell your friends, too. Tell yeah. your friends. Tell your family. Yeah. Pass it on. The mayor's office is a good time. If you think we're are. If you think we're sucked, don't do it. Yeah, then just don't but pay attention. But if you attention. think we're legit, yeah. Give if us, you like us, us, maybe, you know, we can make a little yeah. money and start selling these t-shirts <laughs> to you guys at a little budget price if you're one of the first <laughs> subscribers. Yeah, exactly. Right? Let's Jesus. open up a store, the mayor's office store. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? All right, All right buddy. Chinch. All right, man. Have a grateful day, man. And uh, we will see you. We will see you next week. Okay, bro. Hey, Support this week for the mayor's office is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right. The 4.0, baby. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code the mayor at manscaped.com. I tell you what, though, I love these things, Chinch. I've had them 
Man, I've had Manscaped 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and this is the 4.0. This one has a new sleek design. It's perfect for guys like me, though, dude. I'm one of the hairiest guys going. That's a fact. And for, and that's the fact. And forever, man, forever, I've been looking for the best trimmers. Even going way back years of when I was playing, I'd always nick myself up, cut myself as the worst. These trimmers right here, man, they are the best. They are the absolute best. Trims up my back. Trims up my arm, the jewels, whatever it takes. Yeah. But this trimmer is the absolute best. The 4.0, the lawnmower from Manscaped. I can vouch for that. I know Sean wears a sweater 24 hours a day, <laughs> 365 days a year, and he needs this. He sent me one. I'm so psyched. I shave with it. That's how good you got, it is. That's how yeah, and it is. Chinch, I've tried every, every one you can try. Every clipper you could possibly buy, I've tried. Yeah. This by far is the best. Yeah, Sean puts a clipper on his, it'll break the clippers, but not the manscaper. Yeah. So Every, everyone, do. everyone should have this, bro. Everyone yeah, well, should have one of these. They absolutely should. So here's how you get it, okay? You get 20% off and free shipping with the code the mayor, right, Sean? The mayor yes. at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping, manscaped.com, and use the code the mayor. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. And you can look as clean as Casey does now. When, he's, <laughs> when he doesn't use a Manscaped, it's like Sasquatch. There's the, the people call it cops. Unbelievable. Lawnmower 4.0. Go get it. It's unbelievable, Chinch. <laughs> Do it.